So next, we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of each uh, primary energy source. And we'll start with fossil fuels, but we will also look at the pros and cons of other fuel sources as well. So remember, the fossil fuels are coal, oil, and natural gas. And we will evaluate each of these based on net energy, availability, and the impact on the environment and on human health. So we'll start with coal. It's a solid fuel, and it's used primarily to uh, create electricity, to produce electricity. It was formed from the remains of plants preserved 280 million to 360 million years ago. So that makes it non-renewable. It took a long time to form it in the first place, and once we use it, it's gone. The countries that have the largest coal reserves are the United States, Russia, China, and India. Now think back to the chapter on population and what countries have the largest population size. China, India uh, making a lot of ground, going will soon surpass China then the United States and Russia is right up there too. So we have the largest coal reserves and through the current um, industrialization processes that are taking place combined with the large population size, lots and lots of coal is being mined and used. So what's wrong with that? Well, coal is plentiful, but it's the dirtiest of all fuels. Here are some of the contaminants that can be found in coal. So when that coal was fossilized all those years ago, as it fossilized, various elements were um, consolidated in it as well. Think of rock and how it, it forms. So some of these elements that happened to be in the coal remains, in the remains that became coal, are mercury, which affects the nervous system, can lead to dizziness, seizures, and other um, medical issues. Lead, again, very bad neurologically. Arsenic, which can be poisonous in high enough quantities to humans and is certainly poisonous to um, other organisms in lower quantities, lower concentrations. Sulfur, that element that gives the rotten egg stink to the air. Particulates, which are little particles that if breathed in by, the, by a person or by uh, another organism um, can cause lung problems. Radioactive pollutants. So this is an interesting one, kind of. Um, who would have thought that radioactive pollutants would be released when coal is burned? But just like these other um, elements, there can be bits of uranium or thorium mixed in with the coal. And in fact, it's believed that it's possible that coal releases more radioactive pollutants than a nuclear energy power plant, um, unless, of course, the nuclear power plant has a meltdown. And then there's this toxic ash byproduct. And you saw in the earlier diagram of coal being used as um, a source to generate electricity and that there was amount of ash left over. Well, when we use trash, for example, in a trash to energy plant or a waste to energy plant, that ash kind of smells more like your fireplace or campfire smells. But the toxic ash for coal burning has all of these elements in it that are harmful and polluting to the soil and to organisms. And that's in the toxic ash byproduct, which is set aside, and I'll show you a picture later, of it's, it's set aside basically in these um, tailings, these pools. And if one of these breaks, it can release a tremendous amount of toxic ash, um, which could then lead to some of this toxic material getting into the water supply or the aquifer down below. 
So I'll mention here clean coal. There's really no such thing as clean coal. There is cleaner coal, which is coal that naturally, typically naturally has less of these damaging elements in it, or it's coal that can be pre-cleaned as we discussed in an earlier um, screencast. And that coal then when it's burned does release less pollutants, but it's still not really clean. Okay, so this is one of those di um, charts from your textbook, which lists advantages and disadvantages of coal and doesn't get very excited about it, but we'll run through it just to make sure that I've mentioned everything. So coal is energy dense and it's plentiful, especially in the countries with high populations. It's easy to get to it. It's generally done by surface mining, though now that some of that surface mining is being used up, we're doing subsurface mining to mine coal, and that is definitely more, um, can be more damaging to human health and the environment. Um, technological demands are very small. Break it up, burn it, that's it. Um, economic costs are low. It's easy to handle and transport. You just put in lots of this rock and dust material into a, a train and transporting it. And unlike um, oil, it doesn't, uh, petroleum of any kind, it doesn't need much refining. So the disadvantages are that it contains those impurities that I've talked about, those toxic elements. And when burned, these impurities are released into the air. Um, some of these impurities include heavy metals such as mercury, lead, and arsenic. And when combusted, other um, nasty chemicals are released, particularly sulfur, which combines with the um, water and oxygen in the air and produces sulfur dioxide, which leads not only to air pollution, but to um, acid rain or acid uh, precipitation. There's a tremendous amount of ash left behind that needs to be transferred and um, dealt with. And a very big one is carbon is released into the atmosphere, which contributes to climate change. And it's not as efficient, as we've mentioned before, as some other sources of particularly um, natural gas. Okay, I am, let's see, am I going to cover petroleum now or wait? I am going to continue on with the next source, the next fossil fuel, which is petroleum. And petroleum is a mixture of hydrocarbons, so carbons, long chains of carbons with hydrogens um, and oxygens all chained together there. Um, it has water in it and it has sulfur in it. And petroleum occurs as a liquid in underground deposits. And from petroleum, we extract oil and gasoline. These are energy dense and they're ideal fuels for mobile combustion, such as in a car. So you couldn't put a lump of coal in your car and combust it to produce energy, but you can put a tank full of gasoline. So, so petroleum, like coal was formed from organisms that lived millions of years ago. In this case, it's from ocean-dwelling phytoplankton, so little organisms that do photosynthesis that died 50 to 150 million years ago. So it's relatively younger than coal, but it's still not renewable. You can't make more petroleum in our lifetimes. Once it's burned, it's burned. Now, which countries have the most petroleum? Saudi Arabia, Russia, the United States, Iran, China, Canada, and Mexico. So here you can see some of the um, big players, the countries with large populations, such as China are here in the United States. Some places with smaller uh, population sizes, but larger quantities of petroleum, including Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now, uh, Saudi Arabia right now is producing about 20% of all oil. And together, there are countries known as OPEC, uh, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. And they are controlling 78% of the oil supplies globally. 
States. But the United States also has a significant amount of petroleum, which we are not um, extracting. So why aren't we extracting it? Well, these oils, um, this petroleum um, is considered uh, strategic reserves for one thing, where we want to preserve them so that um, we can be energy independent. For example, if the prices um, that OPEC is charging come too high, we have also been preserving certain areas like in Alaska, the um, Arctic wildlife um, something refuge, Anwar, I'm blanking on the um, acronym, uh, which is in a very pristine environment that is very critical to a number of species and the risk of an oil spill is quite high. That would be very damaging to the, that ecosystem. Um, so we have chosen in large part not to tap into those resources. Okay, let's take a look at where petroleum might be found. So petroleum is typically not at the surface, though in some places in California it's been very close to the surface, but it's usually under layers of rock. And that rock has the remains of these organisms throughout it, but some of it, because of density, has separated out and is floating on top of the rock reservoir. So there's sandstone, very loose uh, stone from which the lighter oil can rise. And then lighter still, usually at the top of the oil area, is natural gas. And it used to be that just the oil was removed and the natural gas was actually allowed to be just uh, released into the air or burned off. And now that natural gas as an energy source has been understood. That doesn't happen anymore. We do extract that natural gas first and then the deeper oil. So you can see that there are some technological advances into extracting the petroleum, but there's not a widespread amount of damage all over here in terms of the surface. Um, but then we do get into where is that petroleum really located. So in the case of the Gulf oil spill, not only was the oil under the ground, it was under the ground at the bottom of the Gulf. So you had not just rock here, picture there's water, and then rock, and then oil. And so as you saw in that case, when there's an accident, the oil spill into the water is a significant problem. Okay, again, looking at the boring chart of advantages and disadvantages of petroleum, just to make sure we've covered everything, it's convenient to transport and use, it's relatively energy dense, and it is cleaner burning than coal. That means, um, let me back up a second, oil, um, the natural gas, this is CH4, and that's the cleanest burning because um, there's only the one carbon and the four hydrogens. Um, oil is a very dense uh, material as well, but when it is burned, it does not produce as much CO2 as coal does, and it doesn't release all of those contaminants that we mentioned, like the heavy metals. But it still does release a significant amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, there's a possibility of leaks when extracted and transported, and I think that's a really um, understatement here. Definitely a possibility of leaks. And it does still contain some, but not as much, sulfur, mercury, lead, and arsenic, but not nearly as much as coal does. And there's a limited supply. Okay, we are out of time, so I will pick up on natural gas on the next screencast.